good. It's recording. We're recording now. Okay. So, hey everybody, Mariah Lopez. And for this video, the ebony on the back of my name is a little more relevant than usual. So, I'm doing this video. Um, it's very, very long overdue. And excuse the casual, my casual appearance. But this just had to be done. Couldn't wait any longer. I was really kind of procrastinating because it's such a big message. But I'm going to just go ahead and try to get this out the way. This video is directed at ballroom specifically. And obviously some people may not like what I'm about to say. I'm not going to spark it in the way you guys think. But as usual, I don't give a blank. And I'm actually sitting here with my girlfriend, Erica, who actually was one of my first gay mother. Sylvia came and snatched me out. No shade. You know, when Sylvia comes saying, that's your mother, girl, you just paid. No shade. Love her down. But that's who's <laughs> behind the camera. The, the, the camera. And it brings me back to the original peer because this is where I met Erica. And the reason I bring this up is because I wanted to be very, very clear because I don't know people out there if they know me, especially the kittens and the kids. In the kiki scene but i am a new york ballroom child through and through be no fool um i learned to vogue on the original pier i got some of the last tidbits of ballroom real ballroom i was made in ebony originally by octavia herself when she was in ebony for a short period of time catch the millennial ball on youtube and you will see me actually if you look for old way You'll see me sitting there at the table when Ger Ger Gerald, was Gerald, got thrown off. What was his name? Anyway, God bless his soul. And so, um, the point I'm, the reason I bring this up is that I'm an activist in several different areas of my community, but ballroom, whether people know it or not, is kind of where I focus my attention behind the scenes. And so this video is about a project, but also the timing is absolutely intended. Star has been trying to get Ballroom's attention around working on a Ballroom memorial on the pier for the longest. And for lack of resources on my part, and that I'm human, and there are only 24 hours in a day, and the fact that there's political shit in our community, people are very cliquish. Um, and just for other reasons, this message has not caught on. Caught on. But we're in fucking Pride Month, y'all. And for other reasons, because the bullshit that I'm hearing, I may not go to balls every day, but again, I mean, every week, but again, I'm a ballroom kid and I hear what's going on, fighting and constant violence. And so with all of this going on, my, the project that I'm speaking of is way more relevant than ever. So what would a ballroom memorial look like and, and, and why a ballroom memorial? I'm going to get to that. But we in pride week, like I said, and my mother, I don't have a ballroom mother. I have a mother that fought in Stonewall and who is a really, really huge, significant transgender figure. So when it comes to mothers and, and legendary, no, no reason to say my gay mother is actually legendary and iconic. And so I say that I'm one of the only ballroom kids that are connected directly to Stonewall. And so this week... I always get very emotional because I'm very frustrated at the corporate white pride and where white mainstream gay and lesbian communities have brought our pride to. So I have notes here and I'm going to start reading off my notes because I can get a little, but I think it's important for me to, to say everything I'm going to say and ballroom to listen. And so obviously I'm asking people to share this as well. So why even have a ballroom memorial? Because ballroom has fucking reason to be proud of itself and to define its own pride and heritage. We don't have to fit in to this corporate pride and do what they say and leave the pier at a certain time. God damn it, that is our pier. My gay mother's best friend and founder of Star My Organization, someone that fought in Stonewall as well, a black trans woman named Marsha P. Johnson's body was pulled from the pier. There are countless other people thousands that are connected to the pier through heritage and they tell us we got to leave the pier on pride at one the fuck a.m. So ballroom has a reason to be proud and define itself. And for no other reason than that, we have a right to declare that we want to erect 
uh, a memorial on the pier. And I've got a petition up and Ballroom has paid it. But after this video, I hope y'all don't pay it. It's going to be under. But, but it's bigger than that. A Ballroom memorial will bring us together like nothing has ever before. There is nothing I know of that has ever brought the Ballroom together in a historic epic way around one thing. Um, you know, we, we have a saying in the ballroom, runway as a house or whatever as a house. Well, bitch, how about ballroom as one house? That's kind of the hashtag. Um, there's no reason why we shouldn't realize that we for once around this memorial and against the world, we're on the same side and we need to appear uniform and strong and united. From the south to the north to the new houses in the Midwest and on the West Coast. We have to all as ballroom be united and declare our culture. Um, I kind of just said nothing has unified us. But a ballroom memorial um, would connect chapters, generations, states, and houses like never before. Because what this would mean is some kind of committee set up and a very fair process that is transparent where it could take years, y'all. I don't know what this memorial is going to look like, but we're going to come together maybe to form a ballroom heritage library, something where this will require us to start sharing stories and heritage and collecting it in one place. Nothing like that has ever been done fruitfully and, and, and earnest. Um, and so different generations and different sex, we are so divided from generation to generation and click to click and the kiki against the old girls and the iconic girls. And, and I'll just say this to no shade. I don't really want to get into it, but I'm not going to get into the shit about the labels. I may not be a, 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 a legend or icon in the ballroom, but in terms of trans shit, just like my mother, I'm a real legend. But I will say I don't play that shit with the labels. I'm an old school girl. I think I'm in the blue era. Miss Thing, if someone says your name and I have to go, huh, you're not a legend. If you don't define your category when someone says your name and blank, you're not an icon. So let me just, whatever. I don't know who you guys are, but I still don't mean that to divide, but these things divide us and we just need to get over it and stay and, and turn into a memorial. will kind of hash some of those things out to no reason or shame because going back to our history, we will find answers to questions. Some of them like what defines a legend, but some more complex legend um, um, questions. So I think that it would, it would unite us like nothing um, has ever before. And obviously, a memorial will give us the chance to document, preserve, and pass on our history, not only to new generations, but to the world. We have that right. We have the right to pass our legacy on in a uniform, unscattered way. We have a right to say, this is where you go to find out about our heritage. If no one is there, there will be plaques and monuments for you to look at and view. Because we are beautiful people and we deserve it. Um, ballroom. A ballroom memorial will allow us to take back our space. There is no coincidence to the fact that I'm trying to put this video out this week. Because on Friday, Star will be, very ballroom term, storming the Trans Day of Action. But that's a separate video. It'll come. But... Um, the pier itself is ballrooms and we just kind of really pay it. And I've already opened up communications with the Hudson River Park Trust around a temporary memorial. If we were to start one with teddy bears and stuff, but, but they're already on notice that we're coming as a community. If I could ever get anybody behind me to declare this our space. And so this means certain things like maybe next year they won't be able to tell us to leave at 1 a.m. Because maybe there'll be a pile of photos and teddy bears and stuff that we've started. At any rate, whatever it looks like, there'll be something there to mark it as our own. The timing is important, folks. Listen very carefully. The National Park Service, through President Obama, has started a national GLBTQ theme study. What does that mean? It, there's a study through the National Park Service with, with coinage and with a mandate from the president to identify History, stories, and events that have impacted GLBTQ history and American history that are usually untold. 
Whoa. That kind of sums up all of them. The unknown important stories. Crystal Labeja, two years before the Stonewall riots, leaves the stage in indignation and 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 and, and, and in protest because of blatant racism. Um, when we look at the world she lives in, and we apply post Stonewall knowledge, we go, "Wow, Crystal was doing this two years before it was even legal to walk outside in the clothes she was in because she could have been arrested because she was in drag." We deserve to be acknowledged uh, across the world. There's voguing in Russia now. We've helped a certain artist, Madonna, sell more. I think Vogue sold more singles than any other uh, any of her other number one hits. Vogue is her number one selling uh, single. Everybody from Tamar Braxton to I mean I cannot turn on the TV and not hear ballroom lingo. And so we have influenced world culture. Obviously. And so for all these reasons, we need to get into this National Park Service theme study, ladies and gentlemen. But we can't do that at all, how ballroom has been going forward. So this video is running long, I know this. And I'm going to bring it to a close now. But I want to get this out and be very clear because now, now it's going to get a little shady. I know for a fact that there are people within New York ballroom that for personal reasons do not like me. My business with my ex-gay father is my motherfucking business. And understand that I know you faggots are cliquish. But understand that besides my being a person and being able to act this way and respond emotionally, I'm a calculated, tactful, strategic activist. And I think if we use our brains, kids, before the president leaves office, we will make sure that ballroom is included in this National, Bo National Park Service GLBTQ theme study. The reason I bring up New York Ballroom is I've realized that besides people connected to other people who I have personal shit with, I don't get disrespect from ballroom. People don't have negative things to say about me about either what happened at the latex ball or what the fuck I do outside in my wearing my many hats as an activist. I can be who I am and have my personal shit. But for the rest of the ballroom from here to Florida to the to L.A., I'm asking you to stand with me and understand how important this project is. I'm asking New York girls to understand. Put your personal shit aside. We don't have to like each other, girl. But I'm very good at what I do. And if we focus, it won't be easy or quick. But imagine in 10 years, statues of Octavia and, and Willie all over the pier missing huge monuments to our culture. Imagine what this would mean for us and our generation and what this mean, would mean for ballroom going forward. So, you bitches got Rihanna at the Rumble Ball. You bitches raised thousand dollar pots of money for, to Vogue at Vogue Nights. But we still don't got a mutual fund in the community to bury our dead or to bail bitches out when they go to jail. We raise money and... Bring awareness to our community when it suits us for our superficial temporary needs. Goddamn. For all you so-called icons traveling, spreading Vogue culture, understand that I know you will come to said ballroom memorial once it is built. Because whatever Mariah puts her motherfucking mind to, it happens and I have other people behind me. I'm calling out legends like Father John Moschino and Andre Mizrahi. We've spoken about this. Um, Tyra, um, we all don't have to get along, um, you, but I know that I have icons in my corner. Hector Extravaganza. I know I have icons behind me. Why won't the rest of the ballroom stand behind me and get this accomplished so that, so that we'll have something to really brag about as a community? The next time you faggot speak to Rihanna, the next time you bitches speak to whoever the fuck it is y'all speak to in the industry, make sure you tell Madonna, bitch. If Madonna calls, tell that hoe to sign the ballroom petition. What is that? So, um, this ballroom, this video is running extremely long. I think I've gotten out anything I've needed to say about ballroom and the memorial and why I chose to do this video this week. A link to the petition will be under, but you guys need to do more work as a, as, a, as a community to send me the leaders so that we can go to Washington. I have contacts at the, the National Park Service. I'm not going to just keep representing ballroom. So I'm, I'm asking people to join me, obviously, this week. I'm sweaty as a hog and all emotional. Obviously, ballroom is dear, near and dear to me. I'm signing off. Remember, it's Pride Week. 
When they tell you hoes you can't hang out in the village on Saturday night going into Sunday or Sunday, when pride don't feel the same, I want you to think about this video. Erica, I'm out.